Are you drowning in deadlines and to-do lists? Discover the project management secrets to elevate your game with these elite prioritization tactics that every, and I do mean every project manager should know. If you're new to the episode, if you're new to the channel, I go by the name AD. For you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means it. Today's episode is entitled Project Managers. Listen up. From overwhelm to in control. Project Management Prioritization Secrets Reveal. As you know, I have an eight-point framework. After that, we up out of here. Um, do you mind if I tell you a story? There was a book that I'm actually going to go back in and reread, but I, I, I happened to look at my notes from when I first read it, and I pulled a couple notes out of it. And if you don't mind, I'd love to share just a, a couple uh, of these notes. This book is entitled uh, Eat the Frog, 21 Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done in Less Time. This book is by Brian Tracy. The point of this book, it really emphasizes the importance, and I do mean the importance, of efficient time management. See, what I love about it is really the metaphor of the book. The metaphor of the book of Eat the Frog, it really refers to really facing the toughest thing as far as the toughest part of your job at the beginning. Um, and this really sets you up for success throughout the day. Now, as project managers, we all know that uh, sometimes you can't plan that way. You never know when the toughest part of your day can be. But we can pull from this particular book of Brian Tracy's book of being able to, uh, to, try to do our best to work on the things that are the most tough is that we are that we're already cognizant of now if we're not then you already know also in my in my book the magnetic project manager in chapter three i want to share a quote with you uh that uh it when i heard this quote i was like ooh. So i was like I, I had to put it in the book and i actually have it on on my wall that's how much this quote to me really means uh, because a lot of times people will say they're looking for change. People will say that, um, watch this, that they want to do better. People will say that they want more out of life than what life is giving them. People, okay, I'll stop. Here's the quote real quick, family. The quote says, some people don't want to be fixed because being broken gets them attention. Ooh, this is by Brad Turnbull. Again, I'll read it again because it's that, it's that hot, family. I'm sorry. I'm excited. I'm a little excited today, so you got to excuse me. Again, it said, some people don't want to be fixed because being broken gets them attention. Again, it's in this book, The Magnetic Project Manager. Hey, if you haven't picked you up a, a copy, please pick you up a couple copies. Hey, do a bulk order for all I care. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. It is truly an excellent read. I wouldn't put my name on it if I didn't believe in it myself. Anyway, let's get back to what, you're, what you came here for. Point number one. Hey, listen, family. You know, you know one of the, the things about... Uh, having this ability to, to do what I'm about to discuss here in point number one, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be surprised. You're going to say, man, I didn't know it was that simple. See, we, we, we complicate things. And in this thing of project management, the thing that I love that I hope that you will love, we don't have to complicate it. We can make this so simple and still get the same outcome, still get the same results. If we can start finding ways to get there in a more simplistic yet no, I'm not even going to go there. I, I'll say that for later. But anyway, point number one, the power of no. <laughs> yeah, no, N-O. You know, family, sometimes we get pulled into a lot of different things as project managers, like prioritization shift or people need help here or doing that and doing this. And you have to have the confidence. And I use the word confidence because it's hard um, when you are someone, especially like me, I, I, I struggle with this. And this is why I started with this, because I'm talking to my to myself as well. The ability to have the confidence to say no to low impact activities and focus on really what truly moves the needle, what really allows this project to move forward. And and we can get caught up in low impact activities that where you are oh, you you probably gonna want an example because i got a very intelligent family out there low impacting activities 
you're on a call that you have no business being on as a project manager, but you're there because you're thinking, oh, I'm supporting when you could be working on chasing down other things. Okay, you don't like that one. Here's another one. Um, you just had a meeting and now they're saying that a meeting recap is due and you're like, well, we didn't discuss anything. One thing that we talked about that was actionable was setting up another meeting to figure out where the resources at that should be at this particular meeting. So be careful. And I use the word be careful because if you don't, you can find yourself working on low impact activities that do not move the, the needle. So again, learn the power of no. Hey family, I really do appreciate you taking the time out to watch today's episode. Please don't forget to hit that like. And if you haven't subscribed, because I know some of you guys is watching that haven't subscribed yet. So I'm going to earn your subscription today and every day that I turn on this camera. So I hope that you subscribe and support us. It really does mean a lot to us. Um, it's, it's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. So let's move on to uh, point number two, avoid multitasking traps. Again, avoid multitasking traps. One of the things that one of my favorite books around, um, and I, again, I'm, I'm still someone that's in training. At least I can admit that some people will not admit that, but I'm still in training when it comes to not doing multiple things. And one of my books that when I find myself getting put into these multitasking traps, I will always go back and revisit this book called The One Thing by Gary Keller. And the reason why I love this book, book because it talks about what this particular thing is here is by focusing on just one task, you really have the opportunity. And it's true. Uh, I don't care how, how, how gifted you are, but it is really true because I've seen it myself work when I, when I actually do it. Is It really boosts your productivity by focusing on one task at a time despite what they're saying out there about the multitasking myth. So family, point number two, having the ability to avoid multitasking uh, type activities, or I should say traps. Point number three, regular review uh, rituals. Um, uh, you know, when you are leading a project, you could get so caught up in um, the activities that and, and, and trust me, I've seen it happen. I've done it to where you you're moving so fast and you're going and going that you forgot about the importance of those weekly meetings, the importance of those weekly or or, or twice a week meetings. It really allows you to get a pulse of what the team is experiencing, because if you do it well enough, you really should be able to create a safe place for the team to talk. Uh, with uh, as far as when I say the team, I'm speaking your stakeholders that are, are part of the project. So implementing weekly reviews, it really allows you to adjust the priorities and stay on track towards project completion. Point number four, you heard of it before. They call them SMART goals. What does that acronym SMART stand for? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. That's what I think that's the synopsis of really what a project truly is. Um, but I digress on that point. But really, family, when you are when you are actually working through your and leading your project, make sure you are doing the uh, setting smart goals. I wanted to say something else, but I, I caught myself. But really make sure you're setting smart goals. It will really help you long term of when you're actually leading the uh, project time blocking Ma uh, mastery message. You know, anytime I say message, this is a very important thing that you need to lock in. This is something if you don't have a pen or paper, uh, you need to go right, type this on your phone. Listen, this time blocking mastery really has saved me on a lot of projects. I wish I could tell you something different. Hey, I got eight, eight things here to really assist you. But this one right here is my number one. The reason why time blocking uh, mastery works so well and what it is, is basically the ability to carve out blocks of time so you can focus. And I do, you see my ball in my fist because I really mean this. You can really truly focus on high priority tasks and you're able to watch this family protect your time and protect the time of stakeholders. And what I do during that time block mastery, I actually learned this 
from when um, I used to see, you know, teachers will have a period in which they would leverage as far as to work on the lesson plans for the next day. So I was like, man, I wonder if I could do that for project management. So I kind of took that concept and said, hey, won't I just, you know, block off 30 minutes or an hour to really focus on the things that I really need to focus on? Because maybe I was at, you know, a, a lot of different meetings and I didn't have time to look at maybe following up on emails or IMs or whatever that thing is that you wanted to block off. Uh, I mean, whatever you really wanted to focus on. And one of the things I like to do when I'm in this time blocking mastery, I make sure when I block my time off that the things that I said I was going to do, I prioritize, I prioritize what I'm going to do first. So let's say, for instance, I say, all right, during this, this one hour block, I'm going to focus on emails. I'm going to get all of the emails out of my inbox. I'm going to focus on uh, making, going to look at the project schedule to see how we're performing there. Then I'll, um, then, then the third thing is going to be looking at the project management plan, making sure to see if there's anything that I need to shift. How is our communication plan? Are we, are we effective there? And things of that nature, family. Let's move on to point number six. The feedback loop implementation. This, again, is one of my favorites as well. But really, the, fee the, the feedback loop uh, implementation is really using stakeholders' feedback to prioritize features and improvements that really matters the most. Listen, you know, I always, I always, be, I always make fun of this, but it's, it's really true. The customer is right. They are the one that's paying you, but sometimes the customer can be wrong. So it, just in case if they can be wrong, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Let's, it's, let's not assume that they want one thing when they really want another. And the only way we can do that is through documentation and conversation to ensure we're delivering the best value of what the customer actually needed and not what we think they, they wanted. But that's a whole different conversation. Point number seven, this is something I haven't never used, I have never used before, but I'm when I was doing my homework, I was like, man, I think I'm gonna use this, uh, I may test this out and experiment with it. So again, family, I've never used this one. It's called the I, uh, the, uh, <laughs> The Einhauser Matrix. The Einhauser, uh, the Matrix, also referred to. I, I called it the Urgent Important Matrix. So when I found out um, the this the name that they had for it, Einhauser or something of that nature, and I may be saying it wrong, so you guys can correct me in the uh, the comments. I don't mind being corrected. I'm here to learn, just like I hope you are. But really, we call it the Urgent Important Matrix, and reason why it helps you decide and prioritize tasks based on urgency, importance, and sorting out less urgent and important tasks, which you could probably delegate to somebody else to assist or not even do, do it all. And it's really based on four quadrants. So you have your first quadrant will be urgent and important. Your second quadrant would be not urgent, but yet still important. And then your third quadrant would be urgent, but not important. And then your fourth was not urgent or it, and is not important. So just imagine, you know, I've, I've, I've seen it done on an Excel sheet. I've seen it done with actual software. Um, again, I've never used it. I'm always want to be transparent with you, family. I've never used this this technique. However, just when I w again when I was doing my homework, I was like, man, this might be actually valuable uh, to my project management career. So I'm going to test it out to see how how well it works. And again, just I want to go over those quadrants again: urgent and important. That's quadrant one. Quadrant quadrant two is not uh, not urgent yet important. Quadrant three is urgent but not important, and quadrant four is not an urgent and not important. The, the last and final point, uh, which is one of my favorites, which I, oh man, this is, this is one of those, remember when I told you about time blocking, like I said, this is point, this is number two after time blocking, and that is the daily top Three. What are three things that you know that they, they're a must do? They must happen. These are tasks that you know you really need to to focus on and get or, or get directions on. So uh, the start each day by defining those must do tasks to maintain your focus and direction. And plus, family, it'll allow you to stay ahead and lead the project appropriately. Hey, family, I really hope you enjoyed me going over these and. 
uh, these are some really good productivity uh, hacks or I should say really secrets and tips that I've learned along the way in my career and I hope that it can help you. You know my slogan. Until next time, I'm out.